goody was goody. It's your girl, Miss Lady, the Plant Lady, and I'm back, back, back again. And I'm here with something a little special. Spring is around the corner, and guess what? Winter's almost over. So I thought, let me give you a little tour of the ambiance. So you can see how my plants fared over the last cold couple months. And you can see the tea on how they've grown, what suffered, what thrived, and what went on. So without further ado, let's get into it. Y'all, what's good, what's good, what's good? We are back with another tour and I'm really excited because guess what? We are at the end of winter and it's close to summertime and I love the heat and I love the humidity and I love it all. So without further ado, let's see how these plants were able to do over the winter and let's see what they're up to before we take them outside and let them live their best life on this summer of 2021. What's good? Let's get into it. Wow. Okay. First and foremost, we're greeted by a little pothos baby doing her thing. You know, she's not the rarest, but she's accountable. You can count on her. Now let's look at the top. The little fish tank is popping off. I made it a nano tank with all nano fish. Even though I still have like two Corydoras in there that are regular and one Tetra in there that's a little regular, but everything else is nano, which I'll show you in a second. But let's talk about these plants up here. Um, back here we have a little, some little pothos cut-ins, you know, just propagating. We have some Syngonium podophyllum. We have some spider plants up here just doing their damn thing. The orchids are popping off. You can see the roots aquaponically, aquaponically growing in. And they're doing their thing. Up here we have some aquatic plants that I, to be honest, I do not know the name of. But I think this is like water lettuce or something. I don't know if you know exactly what these plants are. Let me know in the comments because I would love to know. Now let's take a closer look at the fishies. We got the tetras, the emperor tetras, little baby auto sinkless right there. Uh, what else? Everybody else is hiding. Sorry for the glare on this. Yeah, everybody else is hiding. Oh, you can see the little sparkling gourami back there looking so cute, adorbs. She's doing it. Oh, we see a little scarlet baddest right down there doing her thing, hunting, cause they're micro predators. And a little shrimp, we'll zoom in, doing her thing. But yeah, the fish tank is doing really cute. I'm loving it. Remember, don't touch on the glass. The fish are just chilling. They don't want to hear it. But let's keep it pushing. Next, we have the bio orb. You guys already saw the update. So this isn't too much of anything that's new. But the Syngonium Rayi is doing amazing. Look at the aerial roots on that orchid. Popping off. The Begonia Amphioxus is doing amazing. The Geogenanthus. The peperomias are popping off too. The Biophytum sensitivum is doing her thing, literally flowering like every day, dropping a flower, bringing a new one in. Varicosum is literally hitting the roof, so I'm gonna have to cut her soon. But she's doing her thing. We had the Anthurium mudianum doing her thing. Rapidophora, Rapidophora cryptantha, just growing. Little jewel orchid down there. The girls are popping. And if we look back here, we have the begonia, no, begonia Milano Blottom, I think. I already have the bottom, but she is popping. Like, gorgeous. And look at that little new leaf coming in right there. Like, honestly beautiful. So, there we have it for the bio orb. She's looking cute to boot. She's doing it. But let's take it out of the window. Now over here, the window is looking a little bare just because I did move all my ripsalis outside, which I will show you in a bit. 
but I have just been working on a lot and taking some things to the living room because it's getting a lot more natural light. But we can still look at what we have going on over here. Um, right down here, we have a very sad Apicia. I can't tell you which one it is, but it's an Apicia. And then we have the Geogenanthus Popegii, which is looking very sad with all these little brown edges and everything. But what I can tell you about this is when I was gone, because I had a family emergency, I had to leave for two weeks. My room got really cold during this like three weeks of snowing. And yeah, a lot of the plants got cold burn. And this was one of them. But what makes me really happy is that we have a bunch of new growth. Let me see. Of new growth coming in at the bottom. So this is about to bounce back summertime. It's going to look amazing. And this is one of my favorite right here. So she's doing her thing. Um, I have my Maranta Lucanera. I think it's Lucanera. Lemon Lime. She's doing her thing. I propagated her. Um, Albo Maranta Lucanera propagating. More propagations. You know. Maranta up here. Variegated. She's doing her thing. And then we'll come right down here. We have a little... Alocasia Regal Shield. This came off the, the mom and she's growing, she's thriving. Here's her sister who's a little taller and an overachiever, but we're living for it. Back there, I have a Calathea Warsawiskii doing her thing. And right over here, we have a little Alocasia Friday that was a pup off my mother Alocasia. And she's doing good, so I'm not mad at her. And if we pull back again, again I have my the Matophyllum sprucianum, which is looking rough. Now, let me tell you, this is one of the plants that got the cold burn, and this is just looking so sad. But what I have faith in is that she gave me a new leaf, which is looking pretty good and stunning. And this one still looks pretty good. And we all remember how she popped off last summer. So I can't wait to take her outside and just wait for those big, luscious, glossy leaves to come back. You feel my drift? So, yes, like, I'm just happy my girls made it through the winter, even though they're looking a little rough, a little rough, but they made it through. And we're on to greener and better pastures. What's good? Now, down here, we have another little Alocasia Friday doing her thing. I'm not gonna move her, because she's chilling. But she's hanging out with her home girl, Monstera Subpanita, Panita, Panata, whatever. And she's chilling. They're doing their thing. I honestly can't wait to get that Monstera on the grow wall, which I'll show you. I got outside. Because I feel like they're just going to snap in the summer. So keep an eye out for that little project because it's really going to be something. Right up here. I have the Maranta Red, which is just doing her thing. I had to propagate her back a little bit, you know, get her right. And next to that, I have this Epiprenum Aplesium, Aplesium? Silver, which my homegirl Plant Ma gave me. Follow her on the Instagram. She's amazing, I love her. And right up here, I have my little Alocasia Maharani, looking cute to boot doing the thing and yeah get into it and that's the window i know it's not the most exciting right now but they're literally just waiting for the summer to come out and come out to do the thing so that's it for the winter let's take it over here to the wall we had the Asplenium nidus which is popping off she is looking kind of amazing. Like, she has been living for these grow lights over here. And she's doing her thing. I mean, like, look at the middle of that. It's just going off. Like, I couldn't be more happy. And above her, I have my little staghorn. She's doing cute. She's actually popping off too, so I'm excited to get her outside so we can get those big, sh like, leaf shields and it just take the fuck off this summer. So, we live in for her. And then we have right here a little Hoya Splash, Hoya Splash, I think that's what it is. I don't know. This is one of those Hoya that I got while I was working at Sprout. And I kind of just fell in love with her and I didn't want to give her up. So she's just kind of chilling here in her little coconut planter. 
and she's doing her thing. I'm not mad at her, and I'm excited to take her outside too so she could get to grow in and, and do her thing, you know? But that's kind of it for the wall. It's cute, it's, it's not as crazy as it used to be, but that's because, honestly, after these next couple of weeks, when I'm able to take everything outside, I think I will not have one plant indoors. Like everything is going outside, everything is gonna live its best life, and that's the tea for the summer, the spring, and the fall. That's it, no plants indoors, everything outside. So let's move over to the grow wall, which is looking kind of stunned. And before we get into the major girl, the collection, let's go down here where I have a little bit of the propagations and things. So, um, over here we have a Sansevieria Bantle Sensation. I forgot the name of this guy. Dang it. And then I just have some Monsera Donsoniae propagating, Silts Bacana, Syngonium Rei. Um, I have a little, shoot, what, what is that? Scent, philodendron, melanochrysum, what's up? I don't know why I spaced that. I have these decorative cuttings that I cut off my mother one because she was just getting so leggy during the winter, it was not cute. But they haven't given me any new growth, but they're still green. So I think once I take them outside, they're going to snap. So we're looking forward to that. I have a little Cebu Blue growing back there. I have a ton of Philodendron Burl Marks, the regular green growing. I have this Tritoscantia Polita, which is doing her thing. She is popping off, looking gorge. Which this is another plant that I can't wait to have outside because they just get so dark and like beautiful that this girl, <sighs> is just holding on for dear life in here right now, but she is gonna snap when we go outside. We have my very sad looking Costas, Azon uh, Costas Amazonicus Barragatus. I think I said that right. And she's holding on for dear life. She's one of the ones that got hit really hard with the, with the cold burn while I was gone. So she's still green. So I'm holding on to that, and I hope that when I put her outside, she's just gonna snap. Um, Farfugium giganteum. This was a little cutting off the mother, which is doing really good, and I love. Some spider plant propagations, another Monstera adansonii, Decursiva, and some more bur burl marks. I mean, I had such a big plant that I just cut them up, and yeah. And then they're gonna do good, and they're gonna go to beautiful homes that will appreciate them. Because I only have a limited amount of space, so I gotta give these babies up and give them homes. So that's it. For the bottom row of propagations, I have all my pots for potting. Oh, shoot, I forgot this. I have a little philodendron majesty right here, which I propagated, and this is the bottom half. So I'm gonna let her live her life, take her outside, and then hopefully we get some new shoots off of her and it grows a whole new little plant. So yes, that's the bottom. Now let's take it to the middle. This is like pretty exciting because these are some of my favorites that I have. And we'll start over here. So here we have my Anthurium Clary. Nervium looking so beautiful. She's giving us a cute little new leaf right there. Living, little inflorescence too. Which I hope we get some berries because I'm in need of some berries. I want to grow some from seed. I think it'd be so fun. Another Milano Chrysum. Look at this. I'm so tired of this. And it's because I, I took the big humidifier out of here. But yes, that's what I can't wait. Put everything outside so they could just unravel properly. We have Philodendron Dark Lord right here. We have the Philodendron Ring of Fire. Philodendron Tordum. This is one that was huge. This Tordum was literally the size of that Philodendron 69686. And the coal burn messed it up so bad that the leaves were literally just falling apart. It was the saddest thing. But thankfully I chopped off the top and threw it in a little humidity dome. It rooted and this is the first leaf it's given me. So we're happy. Like I'm not complaining. 
But moving on, right here we have a Monstera Pinati Partita right there. I have this insanely long Skindapsis Moonlight, which is just growing. She's doing her thing. She's going back there, if y'all can see. Sorry if it's blown out. Next to her, we have this Philodendron Compost Partonianum, starting right down here and making her way up. And she was honestly going behind, so I had to give her a chop, if you could see right there. And she put out a new shoot already that I'm gonna have to give the chop because it's already touching the bottom of the thing. So yes, we love her. And I mean, look at how she is attaching to my wall. It's kind of sickening and I'm totally here for it. So I'm really not mad at her. Next to her, we have this Monstera Peru, which has attached onto the wall and has literally gone all the way up. You could even see her climbing right there, which is so cool. I'm like debating if I should propagate her back or just let her grow for the rest of the year. I'm not really sure. So let me know your thoughts of what I should do in the comments and yeah, keep me posted. Next we have Anthurium Moodyanum, looking cute, giving me two inflorescences right here with these beautiful dark leaves. And I'm so excited to have this outside just because the leaves are so much darker when they're outside and when they're in here with these like LED grow lights, they just kind of go green. But I mean, you can kind of see right here, look at how dark that is. But yeah, really excited to take that girl outside. Right down here, we have Anthurium Frigetii doing her damn thing, looking scrumdily yumptious, beautiful. And she's giving me a new little leaf right there too. So loving that. And then right back here, we have Epipremnum, Epipremnum Skeleton Key, which is doing good. I mean, this leaf is gorge, but she is a little chloroticized because when I was also gone, my grow lamp, my grow lights didn't turn off for like two weeks. So if some things look a little yellow, that's exactly what it is. But the plants are good still, thankfully, and the new growth is coming out green. But she has also been traveling. And if you can see, she's like going right here, up there, down, and she's popping up right next to the Dipenbachia reflector, if you can see that. She's doing her thing. And then we have Philodendron Squammy McCool. I think I'll put the name at the bottom. She's popping up right here, giving us some new hairy petioles, looking gorge, doing her thing. And where did she start at, actually? Oh, she's right there. That's her going down. Right here, right next to the Epipremnum skeleton key. And that's kind of it. I think that's it for this one. Oh, and then right here I have the Epipremnum Panatum. Going up right here. Still juvenile, so it doesn't really look amazing with the slits and stuff, but she's doing her thing. And then we'll start in this one. Here we have the Crystallinum Silver Selby, and she's looking gorge. I mean, this new leaf is to die for. And behind her, we have a Raphidophora, Raphidophora tetrasperma non tissue culture. She's popping off. I have a Silver Sword Hastatum, which the leaves are pretty massive and looking beautiful. This one's looking a little sad and it's one of the older ones from when we had the cold burn and everything. So she has like this weird kind of colorage and it looks like a little burnt. You know, like when you leave your plants outside and they get burned by the cold. But I know she's gonna pop back because she is just as healthy as can be. And look at those roots literally just looking to climb, like I live. So she's doing great. Next to her, we have the Anthurium Pedatum Radiatum, chloroticized to the max. This one's on its way out, but thankfully, if I could get in here, we have a new leaf coming in, so I'm not too worried. And this one is looking pretty chloroticized as well, but I think she'll be good. Once we move outside, it's gonna be a game changer, and I know she's gonna bounce back. 
Back there we have the Dyfenbachia reflector. If we could even get back here. Sorry y'all, this is so much harder to film than I thought. And she's kind of doing her thing. She's living, wait, can we focus? There we go. Looking beautiful. I mean, look at that pattern. That new leaf looks like it's gonna be insane. So super excited about that. Right here we have this beautiful Amidrium Zapellianum leaf coming in. And it's like literally coming from over here. Little baby right there, doing her thing. And then, okay, we'll keep making our way. We have here an Anthurium Vicii. Like, just looking cute. I'm ready for summertime. I can't wait to take her outside and hopefully we get some bigger leaves. I want some more abs on there. Like, I need her to do her thing because I love her. And down here we have a Philodendron Red Heart. Looking gorge. I mean, look at that color. New leaf coming in. Really beautiful. Right here we have a Philodendron Florida Ghost, which is looking cute. We have one leaf here. And one little leaf right here that came out during that cold snap, which I'm surprised didn't like mess it up. It just came out a little smaller, but she's about to give us a new leaf and I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready to have this girl outside because I want her to snap. And I'm in love with these like red petioles. Look at how beautiful. Gorge, love her. And then we have the Philodendron Holtonianum. I mean, look at the size of these freaking leaves they are. Or Jean, I gotta pull back a bit. Hand test, like gorge, gorge. I mean, this leaves everywhere. That's how the philodendron 69686 was. But after she lost all that, it was a wrap. But yeah, she's looking good. We have, remember, if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys remember my Alocasia Zabrina. This is one of the little pups that she had that was just like a bulb and I grew it. And I think we have a big enough specimen that it's gonna survive. So I can't wait to take her outside and let her snap out there and do her thing. But yes, I'm so excited. I'm like, just hold on for a couple more weeks, girl. We're about to take you outside and you're about to live your best life. And right down here hidden, I have Aglionema Bambino Bay. I forgot, let me, I'll have to look that, that name up real quick. But this, Brett with Plants gave it to me, love him, and she's doing amazing. And Brett, look at this. Literally, all these little pups, and it's even pushing out little stems, which I think is so fucking cool. So get into her. And then I have this Anthurium that I just got from Greenery Unlimited, and I'm obsessed with the shape of these leaves. And I think she's about to pop out a new little, a new little, little leaf right there. So, living for her, she's doing it. So, yeah, that's our middle, doing the thing. And next, we'll make our way up to the top. Right here, I have a little Philodendron El Choco, living her best life, giving us a new leaf, which I am too excited about. Honestly, cannot wait to see that unravel because it's the first leaf that she's put out since I've got her. I'm not mad. Alocasia Regal Shield, right here, doing her thing. Monstera Stanliana Variegata, looking gorge right there. Look at that variegation. Looking beaut, beauty. Um, we have this Anthurium crystallinum. I mean, look at the color on that. Literally the size, <laughs> literally that big. So pretty. Like, we'll appreciate that for a second. Beautiful. And then I just have some like random little cuttings back here and little plants. I have Epipranum Shangri-La in the back. I had this really long Philodendron Campos Partoniana growing, doing her thing. I can't wait to get her up on a pole. More Anthurium Moodyanum. I have Philodendron Bipinifolium growing up here. I have some Myoi growing in the back. And right here, I have the top heading to my Philodendron Majesty, which is Gore Jane. I'm in love with her. Looking beautiful. 
And here's just like a wide pulled out view of the grow wall. I know I didn't go over the humidity domes, but it's because I already have the video going over the grow wall and we kind of go in depth. So yeah, so I won't bother you guys with updates on that, how we already have other videos about it. But here is an in-depth look at the wall, the window, the bio orb, and Miss Tank herself. Now, let's make our way to the living room. Some things might look a little different. Oh, let's make a little pit stop. So I decided to bring some plants into the bathroom, which I'm super excited about. Here's a little pull out so you can kind of see what it looks like from the outside. But I got this little growing installation from Sprout, super cute. And I love that it gives me the opportunity to have like some plants in here, even though we have no windows. And these have low key been thriving with this little rigamaroo. So let's take a little deep look into what I got in here. So right here we have a Spathophyllum domino, which has this like really cute variegated, kind of looks like corrugated or rippled leaves, which I love. I have a Crystallinum silver selby, which I took a little chunk out of, I got hungry, what's good. Philodendron in varicosum, Tretoscantia nanook. I have this Hoya, and I don't know the name of it. So if you guys let me know what Hoya that is, I would really appreciate it. Another Boral Marks, because you know I am the spokesperson for the Philodendron Boral Marks, was good. And I had the Tenanthi Setosa is what I'm thinking this is called. I don't know, I'll write it on the bottom. But she's popping off with this little grow light. Like we have one new growth there and all these spikes going off. So I'm not mad at this. I love it. It gives a whole little vibe to the bathroom. Oh, and we have my skin dapsis exotica doing her thing down here and she's looking pretty. So that's it. That's it for the bathroom. I hope you guys liked it. Now let's take it back out to the living room. Over here, we move Miss Palm Baby. Miss Palm Baby. Damn, I gotta pull back. Right here, just giving you the Tropicali vibes. Giving you the Tropicali vibes. And I just moved her over here like a week ago. And it's only for like two weeks because she's not getting that much direct sunlight there. But she's gonna be going outside in the summer. So yeah, she just has to put up with it for two weeks and we're good. But the Pelionia pulchra that I put down here has literally gone off. Like literally snapped her neck. Like literally has been doing it, jumped off the stage. She's performing for us. Like she is looking incredible and I'm living for this. Like, I think it's my new thing. I don't want to see dirt anymore. We're putting trailing plants in all the planners moving forward. So yeah, so here's a little centerpiece one last time, looking cute. Now let's get in to the living room. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, that light is looking gorgeous. Now let's start down here. We have a little Calathea Sabrina, Calathea Orbifolia. I had this Diefenbachia that was a rescue. She's just chilling. We're, we're letting her do her thing. Down here, we have a Stromanthi Triostar. Philodendron Plowmanii popping off. Even though how I don't have her next to the humidifier, the new leaf came out and it was a little whatever. I'm like, okay, it's a casualty of winter. We'll let it happen. But whatever, I can't wait to have her outside and I want to double these leaves. Double the size, let's go. Down here, we have a very sad looking Philodendron Birkin, even though that new leaf is looking beautiful. And then two little snake plants back there. Monstera adansonii growing right there. Pothos just living, giving us inches, doing her thing. I have some prop boxes right here. Seedlings, that's a castor bean plant. She's chilling and then some other like cuttings that I just had chilling, chilling in there. So they're doing their thing. Next to her, we have this Diefenbachia, forgot the name, but okay. When I tell you, you need to get these lights because they make plants pop off. 
I'm saying I'm putting the link right here. Go follow them on Instagram and get yourself one. But look at the quality of these leaves and the color and the shape and the texture and everything, mama. It's, it's beautiful. And look, she's even giving me two flowers right there. Inflorescences, inflorescences. But she's looking beautiful. She's looking gorge. I'm not mad. Now let's move up here where we have a little assortment of things. We have the Philodendron and Gloriosum. This is one that was struggling with the cold as well. But she's giving us a new little leaf out here. Colorotic, but the new growth is dark and beautiful. So I can't wait for this little baby to come out and to put her outside. Not the fungus gnat, not that. More Maranta cuttings. I have my Geogenanthus ciliatus. And I mean, the new leaf looks good. That is that cold burn from when I was out of town. It really did a number on all the plants, but she's looking good. She really snaps when I put her outside for the summer. So I can't wait. Then we have this very long and beautiful Tritoscantia palita. Looking gorge. Ripsalis pilocarpa, which she flowered for me, one flower. I was so happy. And yeah, it was cool. I hope it got pollinated, I don't know. But yeah, she's looking beautiful. Up here we have Aspidistra Singapore Sling, looking gorge. Mama giving us everything from below, giving us everything from below. And here we have my OG plant, my number one, the first one I ever got, Monstera Adansonii. She's looking decent. She's not looking her best, but you know, she still has a spot at the table and that's what matters. Now I'll pull out a little bit just so you can kind of get the vibes of what's going on. Look at that light glare, beautiful. That pothos is giving us inches as well. Who did this? Who did this? Who did this? Oh, one fucking minute. <laughs> okay, there we go. She is looking beautiful. Giving us the inches, baby. The inches, looking gorge. Can't be mad at her. Beauty. Now, let's come to the windowsill. I'm gonna pull back just so y'all can get a little glimpse of what's going on with our rapid four. Looking beauty, looking grace, looking style giving us taste. So let's start over here. We had this moss pole, which was Rapidophora. I had some Adansonia in here and some Philodendron bipinifolium down here. And it's looking cute. The Rapidophora conquered and literally took off. Well, so did the Monstera. Look at, she's doing her thing. She's reaching up too. But the Rapidophora is literally hitting the roof and she's gonna start scaling it. So I'm not mad. She's doing her thing, I'm really proud of her. But I think when I take her outside, I'm gonna give her the chop and just let her grow a little bit thicker on the pole again before I bring her back in. So, but that's a project for another time. But let's appreciate her at the end of winter. And she's looking great. Next to her, we have the Calathea Macoyana, which is looking gorgine. I mean, Gorgine, mama. Gorge, look at with these nails. Gorgine, Gorgina, lover. Calathea Sabrina was one that got hit in my room with lost a lot of leaves, you know, because of that little cold burst. But she's gonna pop back, cause look at these even look a little bit chlorotic, but the new leaves are already popping back, dark and more beautiful than ever. She even has another one coming in. So I know this queen's about to pop, bounce back. And that's why I love her. That's why we get along. And that's, my, that's why she's my ride or die. Next to her, we have this moss pole that we actually designed together um, in one of my YouTube channels last winter. And she popped off. We have this, the 
Pothos, the Neon Pothos doing her thing. And there's even this really cool, This really cool variegated leaf, which I hope I get more like these going up the pole because that would be so cool. Um, Philodendron Hastatum Silver Sword popping off over here on this side. We have the Cebu Blues coming up, doing their thing, living. But the piece de resistance is the Syngonium Chia Pens giving us massive, massive, massive leaves. Like, look at that. Look at that. Gorge. And she's putting up this new leaf right here. So I'm excited and I'm ready for her to do her thing. Down here we have Calathea. Forgot the name, but she's beauty. I love her. I'm on a Calathea kick right now. If you haven't noticed, Marantasia, everything. I'm obsessed with it. So when I saw her, I had to get her. And next to her, we have this Calathea White Star looking gorge. I mean, get into that pattern. It's beautiful. Like, ooh, my socks. It is so pretty. And I'm not even mad at the back of the leaves. Looking gorge. And that's the window. So one last look at the window. The girls reaching for the moon. I live, I love. Live, love, love. Next we have this Dracaena Warneckii. Is that that's what I think? And she's popping. She's doing good. She's looking cute. I have my roommates, Peperomia Polybatra. And that's it for the table. Let's take it to this beautiful setup over here. And when I tell you these grow lights work, I ain't playing, I ain't lying. Now, it's looking a little bare because I've been moving everything to the light, but let's get into it. We have the Calathea Lancifolia. She just gave me this leaf, which is massive. I mean, huge, gorgeous. She's looking beautiful, I can't wait to take her outside. We have the beautiful Aphelandra Squarosa, looking good, that I got from Bros with Ho, still living, still kicking it. Pretty tall. And this one loves like getting direct sunlight outside. So I'm really excited to take this outside and letting her pop this summer, cause she's ready too. Like, look at all these growth points. She's ready to snap. Next to her, we have the Alocasia Regal Shield giving us an inflorescence, which I'm about to cut off. But you know with my allocations, we struggle every year, struggle bust it during the winter, down to these three leaves. But I know that once I pop her outside, it's about to be even bigger than last year. So I love this girl, I stan her. Down here, I have a little Tritoscantia Palita, which is reaching for the light. She's not looking as dark. I think it'll look better during summertime outside. Philodendron Lemon Lime, a very little Philodendron Brantiana, and a little baby, little baby, uh, Maranta Lucanera Variegated. You kind of see this going in. Down here, we have the Calathea Ornata, looking so cute, next to her sister, ZZ Raven, get into the vibes. And here we have Travesia Palmata, looking a little bit chlorotic, but pushing out the new leaf. And she's ready for summertime. This is on the way out from the older leaves. But she survived, so I can't wait to get her outside. And hiding back here is Sansevieria Bantle Sensation, looking great. We're about to repot her this summer because she needs a bigger pot and I feel like she'll snap. So, yes. Moving over here, Ludicia Discolor doing her thing, giving us a bunch of little babies popping off. Loving that. Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen looking beautiful, giving us tendrils, darling, giving us tendrils. And then we have this spider plant looking a little meh, but it's gonna look so much better once you put her outside. But look at all these pups. 
covering up everything we don't want to see. So we stand a queen who works. What's up? Next, we have this beautiful jade that I got from my friend. I love her. I mean, she's giving me this wind sweat bonsai vibe, which I love. I'm living for it. It's giving me everything. Love. Down here, try to scan Tia Nanook. It's my roommate, looking gorge, beautiful. Farfugium Gigantium, Homo Lumina Selby, still looking beautiful, still looking lush. Can we take it her outside? Uh, right here, we have Cordyline Octane, looking gorge. I mean, look at the colors of those leaves, looking beauty. Down here, we have a Tratoscantia Polita Variegated, looking beauty. I mean, look at that blue, like the white, the pink, so pretty. Some Clusia Variegated Cuttings right there. And then we have this moss pole, which I think you guys might remember in the video as well. We have some Brantianum climbing up, Syngonium Potophyllum doing her thing. Look at how cute these look. Love, and then Epipremnum Pinatum. If you guys know the, the proper name for this, please let me know, because it's so stunning, gorgeous. And she's doing her thing, I'm living. And that's kind of it. Oh, and then of course, the Sansevieria, living. I had to chop her back a little bit, just because there was a moment where she got a little cold burn, I had to cut it off, you know? But she's reaching, she's tall, I mean, look at that size of my hands from feet away was good. And that's the living room, y'all. One last little look. Beauty. Grace. Can't wait to take all these plants outside. And we're almost done. I'm just gonna go for the last portion of this. We're going outside. So we got everything set up for the spring, summer, and fall. And here's this little tour. So I got the racks up, doing their thing. I have a little staghorn out here. She's just acclimating. I'm letting her take the brunt of it. I have some aquatic plants, chilling. If you guys know the names of these, please let me know. And then we're gonna go down here where I set up some of the racks. So here's the moss wall, and we're gonna be putting a bunch of different philodendrons, monsteras, syngoniums, and everything. So hopefully they grow up this and attach and get big leaves in the summer. Out here I have my Ripsalis collection, which they are living. And I've noticed that they could handle the colder nights. So that's why I bring them out here prior to bringing out all the philodendrons and everything first, because they seem to weather it pretty good. And here's just another rack. We're gonna be filling this with a bunch of stuff. I think I'm gonna be sep separating like some of the Anthuriums, Calatheas, some of the bigger guys on bottoms like the Farfugium Gigantium, the Philodendron Plowmanii and stuff like that. So yes, here we have a bunch of soil because we're gonna be doing a lot of repotting and propagations. So get into that. And then another Ripsalis, living, doing her thing, looking cute. Another rack. Here I have some stuff that I've already brought outside. The fried egg that you saw was struggle busting. We got her out here. And just a couple seedlings and stuff. Nothing major yet. Pothos, just to make sure that they could handle being out here. But this is gonna be another rack. Another rack. And another rack. And before we, we leave, we gotta appreciate this baby. Looking cute giving us some new growth. But yeah, this is gonna be where all the plants come out in the summer. So get into this vibe. It's gonna be so good, so cute. I can't wait to show you how we set all this up out here and let the growing season begin, y'all. What's good? So y'all, that is the tour. I know it was a long one, but we had a lot to cover. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope you guys seeing how the plants did during the winter. I hope I gave you some ideas of how to set them up next time and what worked and what didn't. But yes, until next time, let's keep in touch. Let's keep it going. 
And I can't wait to show you what I do when I take all of these girls, every single one, and put them outside. And I can't wait to show you the change in growth that happens from having these plants indoors and then having them outdoors and just letting nature do its thing with the heat, with the sun, with the humidity. It's gonna be a game changer, especially, mark my words, this girl, that girl, it's gonna be a game changer. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. That was amazing. It was so cool. I hope you guys enjoyed that little tour. You know, it was a little something, something. A lot of those plants were struggling. It's just the beast of winter. You gotta battle it, what's up? But these plants are resilient and I can't wait to get them outside so that they can thrive and grow and live to see another growing season. But that's all for today. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow. And don't forget to hit that notification bell, ding ding, so you can see what I got in store. And you can be alerted, what's up? I'm here for you, I got you. But I gotta go, I got things to do. I appreciate y'all, but I gotta go do what I gotta do. I will see y'all on the flip, bye-bye.